This is a proof of concept of a battery powered inline voice radio encryption device using a Raspberry Pi. The intent of this proof of concept is to provide end users with a portable and compact means of securing radio voice communications using low cost commodity hardware. This device builds upon the work on digital voice encryption over narrowband FM voice radio demonstrated in the last video. The device consists of the following one Raspberry Pi 3 model B plus, two USB audio devices, and one USB battery pack originally intended for use as a phone charger. The re recommended output for a Raspberry Pi power supply is 2.5 amps. I haven't measured the current requirements for this design, though I would recommend finding a battery pack that outputs as close to 2.5 amps as you can. All these devices are readily available for purchase from many retail outlets and many manufacturers. They can also be packaged into a custom enclosure for improved portability. In a later video, I may demonstrate this. The monitor connected to the device is not necessary for it to work. It is merely connected for diagnostic purposes. I should add, before I go any further, that the original developer of the Codec 2 voice codec, whose work I'm building upon, offers for sale a much nicer and more expensive piece of custom hardware called the SM1000. This build was inspired by that device. I have not attempted to port any of this work to that hardware platform, but if you wish to support that developer's work, you may want to take a look at it, as it appears to be well designed. Anyways, my device is running a heavily customized version of a Linux operating system designed for the application. This is done for several reasons. First, it allows the device to boot very quickly. The operating system is fully operational in about five seconds. Second, it improves device security as unused features like Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and even support for USB flash drives are all disabled. This reduces the potential attack surface for the device and reduces the risk of, that, of some used, unused piece of code causing a problem in the field. It is possible to disable shell access, but for this development build, I have not done so. Third, it improves reliability over standard Raspberry Pi Linux installations. The entire operating system, supporting applications, and configuration are all loaded from the SD card into system memory at startup, which means the device can be powered down at any time without corrupting the software or configuration. Data is never written back to the SD card under normal operation and is only done under explicit command by the user when configuring things like speaker and microphone volume settings. It also allows the SD card to be removed at any time after the system is powered on and remain functional. As you can see, the device remained functional, and I'm going to continue the rest of the demonstration with the SD card removed. This feature also improves device security, since the only two copies of the encryption key are in system memory and on the SD card. Depending on the application, this may be a desirable feature um, as part of a device configuration and initialization procedure. Multiple devices could be initialized using a single SD card and issued to users without the SD card installed. This would ensure each device was programmed with the correct encryption key and software while also reducing the risk of illicit SD card duplication. Then once in the field, the device could be rendered inoperable as desired by simply disconnecting power to the device, which clears the entire system memory. The trade-off, of course, is that if power were accidentally disconnected, that user would lose radio communication. The two USB audio devices allow one device to be connected to a headset and the other device to be connected to a radio. I am again using my Baofeng MERS V1 radio operating on the unlicensed MERS radio band, which allows for digital and encrypted communication. Before operating any encrypted radio transmitter, check your local laws to ensure encrypted transmissions are allowed on the frequency you are using. As for operating the device, the device is always transmitting and receiving signals simultaneously. This allows the device to be used on an analog telephone. I have the transmitter end connected to a speaker to demonstrate this. Those of you who watched my last video should recognize the sound. 
to start and stop transmission on a radio, use the transmit button on the radio, but be aware there is a slight delay between when you speak and when the speech is sent to the radio. On the receiver side, there is a squelch setting that mutes the signal coming in from the radio to prevent the device from attempting to read signal that isn't there when no one is transmitting. To improve security, a new randomly generated key is produced after the first second of silence after voice ceases and every minute of silence afterwards. This is to reduce the probability uh, that an attacker can decrypt a signal during a very long period of silence. Keys are not cycled when speech is detected. Uh, when this occurs, there is a slight period where the audio becomes scrambled due to the receiver syn resynchronizing on the uh, encrypted stream, and I thought this was undesirable when someone was speaking. I will now perform a similar demonstration to the one I did last time, except I will use live speech instead of a pre-recorded sample, and my receiver will be a separate computer. I will again be using my RTLSDR software-defined radio receiver to receive the signal. The audio output on the computer receiving the encrypted signal is connected to the microphone input on the computer I'm recording. I'm using to record this demonstration. The remainder of this video's audio will be recorded from the encrypted digital voice stream. Hopefully this will give you an idea as to the audio quality of the system. And now I'm transmitting. Hopefully this all works. You can tell the audio is compressed, but that's inevitable given the low bit rate of the codec. But it is still possible to make out the words on the sign. Anyways, I think that's all I have for this demonstration. I'm still in the process of documenting all this and getting a functional prototype image that can theoretically be flashed onto an SD card so that others can try this out. Also, they try whip up a simple configuration UI that someone can run on with this PC and do basic things like generate an encryption key and save it to the SD card and update the firmware without reimaging the SD card. But I know there was at least one person who took a particular interest in the last video and I wanted to provide an update.